Hi everybody, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan and today we'll be doing the September TBR list again. All right, let's get into what I'm reading and why. So last month in August and in July, we had like several big readathons and readathons are a great way to motivate me to read. Um, and also I had a lot of spare time because it was um, the summer months, I was no longer in school, and so I had all this extra time to read. I was on vacation. So I read like 15 or 20 books over the course of two months, and that's probably like half to two-thirds of what I've read in total for this year of 2018. Now, in September, I know I'm going to be a lot busier. My schedule's a little bit more hectic, and so I'm not going to be able to read as many books. But I still wanted to give myself a range of books because I found that I am a mood reader. And if I'm not interested in reading a book, or if I lose interest in a book about halfway through, I'll put it down and not touch it for however long it takes me to get out of that mood or that funk. That could take days, weeks, or even months. So I wanted to give myself lots of different options in case I lose interest in one book or even a genre, I can move on to something else. If I'm not reading, most likely I'm doing something that's kind of unproductive. Um, and so therefore, reading is probably the best bet for me. And I really would like to continue to pick up books and read through books because I have a huge list of things that I'm interested in reading. Um, and then obviously there's not enough time or energy to, to get through everything. So here's what I have. I decided I wanted to break these books into two categories. The first category is books that I've started in previous months but still have not finished. So I've gotten anywhere from 20 pages into the book to halfway through the book to I'm about 90% done with um, one book which I'm gonna talk about and I just haven't finished them. Um, some of them, it's only been a month since I've picked them up and started them. Some of them, it's been quite a long time. These are books that I definitely want to finish and get off my, like in the Goodreads list where you have the like books in progress, like books you're currently reading. I want them off that list. So here's the first book that I'm currently reading. It's A Wizard of Earthsea, and this is by Ursula K. Le Guin. As you can see, it's an older book. This is actually, I think, my dad's copy. Um, I had started this for an August readathon at the very end of August, I thought I could slip it in. Um, but as you can see, the writing is quite small, and so it was taking me a little bit longer than I thought. I think I'm about 20 or 30% of the way in the book, and this is actually a reread. I read this back in college for a freshman English literature class. We had to talk about, I think, good and evil, um, and which was, I think, a big theme in this. And so I remember the general, like, general points in this book but I don't remember the details and I want to go back and reread this because one it's on my shelf and I I would like to remember like if I like it or not um, even if I don't like it I am gonna keep the book because it does have sentimental value as being my father's the next book is Mark's Woman and this is by Roddy Miro Mirotra I think is how you say her name this is, as you can see, is a new book. I am one person who definitely judges books by covers, at least initially. I thought this was a pretty cool cover, um, and so I picked it up. I read the blurb on the back, and I also thought it was interesting um, as a concept. It's um, the, A Marks Woman is a highly trained elite warrior, so it's about a female warrior, which I thought was cool. I'm only about 20 pages in. Um, that's about as far as I got before the end of August happened. So I definitely want to read this and, and see if it is as good as people are saying it is in the reviews I'm seeing. Another book I'm reading is The Night Circus. I'm about 20% into this book. This book is actually a reread. I read this probably soon after it came out or maybe a couple months afterwards. And I fall into the camp of I love this book. It's an amazing book. Although I do know there are people who couldn't finish the book, didn't like the book at all. I'm definitely someone who really, really liked it. Um, I, like I said, started this for a readathon and then decided to put it down and read other books that I hadn't read yet because I wanted to take my time on this. I find that I really like this book because of the writing style. I like the way the environment and the scenes are set and I do like the characters as well. So I really wanted to take my time with this book. 
The last book that is on my TBR list, like that I haven't finished reading, um, that's a, I have a physical copy of, is The Young Elites. And this is by Marie Lu. And I actually need to finish reading this in the next two days because it's due back at the library and I have no more renewals left because I've been holding on to this for a couple months. I started this back in July for um, the Owls readathon that I was doing a catch up month for and um, I'm about 40 to 45 percent of the way through the book and then I wasn't able to finish it for the month of July I think I lost interest for a little bit and then when August came I didn't want to read it because I had already started it in July so I didn't want to count towards any of the August readathons long story short I'm finishing it in the next couple days because I need to return it. I have one more book that I started that I haven't finished that I'm going to finish because I'm 90-ish percent of the way through. Um, I basically have one hour left on the audiobook and that is a, uh, the book name is A Thousand Pieces of You and it's by Claudia Gray. It's such a cool concept. It's this, the, the storyline behind this is that there's this girl who is um, whose parents are these like genius inventors and they've created this device that allows a person to travel to alternate dimension, dimensions, almost like uh, the TV show Sliders, except that you don't go in your physical body, it's just your mind that travels with you along with the physical device. Um, and as long as you have the device, you're able to travel to the alternate dimension and then remember being in that alternate dimension and then you can return home. So this girl ends up getting a hold of one of those devices and goes traveling to alternate dimensions. Isn't that such a cool concept? For some reason, I just was not super interested in finishing this book. Once I got started, there were a lot of places where I actually had to say, I need to put this down and not listen to it anymore. And I don't know if it is because it's I'm listening to it on audiobook and I don't like the narrator or I don't like the pacing. Maybe it's because I don't really like the like romantic um, like love interest, love triangle thing that's developing. There's a lot more like romance than I thought there would be or kind of like, anyway, point being, it's taken me a really long time to finish this. Like we're talking months. I think I might've had this book for like a year that I've been listening to it. I only have an hour left. I'm going to finish it. All right, so now we're getting into my second category, which is September sequels or September series. And um, the first one is going to be the two books that finish the Wizard of Earthsea trilogy. And that is these two books, which is The Tombs of Atuan and The Farthest Shore. And these are both by Ursula K. Le Guin. So as you can see, they are all part of the same series. They all have that like old style artwork, which I kind of like and think is really cool. Um, as I mentioned before, I read the first book for college, so I generally remember what the story's about, but these two books, I don't have any clue. I know I've read them, I think I read them after I read this one, but these were not for school, so I didn't have to remember what they're about, and I don't. So I'm gonna read them, so that way, if someone looks at my bookshelf and says, do, do you like those books, I can say yes or no, and why. All right, so the next two books are from Sarah J. Mass, and they are part of the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. It is book three, which is A Court of Wings and Ruin, and then the novella that most recently came out, which is A Court of Frost and Starlight. So I started A Court of Thorns and Roses back in August. I kind of mixed reviews about it, um, at least in the beginning. By the end of the first book, I was like, okay, this is this is not bad. I started reading the second book, A Court of Mist and Fury. I really, really liked that book. Um, and so I had actually finished it, I think, at like one in the morning. And then I had this book on Kindle. So I started reading it immediately after at like 1 a.m., but I fell asleep at 3 a.m. I think I'm about like 20% of the way through this book. And I want to know what happens to these characters. So... Definitely book two is the book that got me hooked on this 
like universe on this world and these characters and so now I want to find out what happens I have heard that this book A Court of Frost and Starlight is not worth reading from people people have either liked it or have been really disappointed in it I think part of the reason why some people were disappointed because they thought this was a full-length book and not a novella so since I know that going in maybe that'll more positively affect my how I think about it so I do want to read it no matter what because I do like this universe and I like the world and the characters and so I want to read all the books related to it this book I think that's my dog someone so I live in a condo and um, I can hear one of my neighbors vacuuming and I think my dog can hear it too and she's getting a little a little uh, like woofy um, all right, so here is the next book. This is A Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levenseller. So I had read Daughter of the Pirate King back a couple months ago. Um, it was recommended through one of the Facebook reading groups that I'm in, and I found that I really did enjoy it. Um, it's basically about a female pirate who is also part siren, um, as you can see from the title of the second, um, second book, so no surprise there although it is a, maybe a little bit of a surprise in the first book, but it's in the title of the second book, so it can't be too much of a spoiler if you've seen the second book. Anyway, um, I really like the character. I thought it was, I think we are seeing more stories about female pirates, um, which is nice because I think we like the, I, I, I say we as in, I think people tend to like the idea of pirates as being this kind of like unique sort of type of character. You're on the water, you're kind of, you know, ruthless in some ways, you know, there's adventure, but a lot of the times, at least traditionally, it's, it's always been men. And so to see female pirates and kind of what their, the, their challenges are, I think is very interesting. Um, I really like the writing style for this one and I did like the characters for it and the storyline so I will be reading that one. I have one more YA um, book that I don't have a physical copy of and it is Obsidio and this is the third book in the Illuminae Files, uh, the Illuminae File trilogy and I read the first two books, the physical copy and listened to them on audiobook and I really like doing both at the same time because the audiobook has a like full voice actor cast of all the main characters um, so each character ha plays their own part and you, you can hear the different voices um, they also have like sound effects and background noises um, which I think really kind of adds to towards the auditory experience but then the book is set up more visually so it looks like a dossier it looks like a collection of files of um, classified documents personal journal entries um, like screenshots of online chats and so to have the audio book going at the same time that you're reading it I think kind of really creates this immersive experience which for me was really cool it does for me take a little bit longer to get through the book because I am listening to it um, and for me listening to it is a lot slower than reading it but I do like having that kind of combined experience all right, I have two more books um, that are more kind of like adult fiction or like mystery horror. Um, they're not why they're not considered YA novels. And this one is *The Silkworm* by Robert Galbraith, which is basically J.K. Rowling's pen name. And she is doing the Cameron Strike series, which is basically Cameron Strike is the main character. He's a private investigator, and I had listened to *The Cuckoo's Calling*. Um, on audiobook while I was training for um, half marathon last year and it had, did take me a couple hours to get into the cuckoo's calling but once I started really getting into it getting into it and listening to it I found that I really enjoyed it part of it might have been because I was on like longer runs that were taking over an hour to complete I was able to listen to longer segments of, of the book and so I was able to really kind of engage with the character. That being said, um, is that being said a contrast or like an addition? Because I'm using it like an addition, but it sounds like a contrast. I'm an English teacher. I should know this. I think it's a contrast. Okay, my point is 
that I'm interested in reading this book and kind of finding out what happens next. I might end up picking up the audiobook version of this so that I can listen to it as I'm training for my half marathon this time. Um, but I do have a physical copy so I could show you as well as read it at home in the evenings if I'm in the mood. The very last book on my shelf is literally a book I discovered yesterday and I picked up completely on a whim and this is my most anticipated read. I started it last night as well. I'm on chapter four. It is called Kill Creek by Scott Thomas and this is basically a horror novel which I haven't really read a whole lot of horror. I've read suspense, I've read and thriller, I've read mystery, but horror I'm not as familiar with. So what got me was two things. Um, I had recently looked at the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge for 2018 because at the beginning of the year I had wanted to do the challenge, but then like school and life happened, so I didn't. But then after reading all the books in August and July, I thought maybe a lot of those books would satisfy the challenges. So I went back and looked at the whole list. And one of the Pop Sugar Reading Challenges for this year is to read a book that um, takes place on Halloween or near Halloween. And this book says that um, a best-selling horror author is invited to spend Halloween night in a haunted house. Um, and he agrees. So this takes place during Halloween. So I was like, ding, 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 it fulfills the challenge if I read it. I also just thought it was really interesting that you have this horror, um, horror story writer writing a story about a horror writer who goes to a, a like a very infamous haunted house and spends the night there as part of a publicity stunt and then you actually kind of see what happens in the house. So I'm super intrigued. Plus, like I know some people don't like when the edges are not like finished, but I think it's kind of cool looking. So I got it because of that. So in combination with the cover and then the edges and the storyline and it fulfills a challenge and it just seems like a, such a cool idea. I am like super excited to read this and I just want to like read it right 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 now. So very very excited about this book. All right so that is my entire TBR list for the month of um, September. Realistically I will probably get three, four books done, maybe five or six if we're talking about books that I'm already like 50% of the way through. So we'll see um, by the end of the month how far I get. I do have a Goodreads account so I'll be leaving reviews of the books as I finish reading them. Um, it might be a little bit slow for me to update depending on my schedule but I will do my best to update it as I can. I would love to hear from you what books you plan to read for the month of September. Um, and or how many you plan to read and I'd like to know if you've read any of the books that are on my TBR list just give me a quick overview did you like them did you not like them you don't have to go into a whole lot of detail especially if it's if it might spoil the book but I am kind of curious to see like how your perspective and opinions kind of compare with mine once I read the book um, so I'm curious. Leave your thoughts down below. Also, please like and subscribe to see more videos um, that are book related on my channel. I will talk to you in the comments and see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.